Okay, this is Lecture 10, Chapter 10, Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia is made up of many countries that are in the mainland and in the island region. As you can tell on the map, starting at the top left, you have Burma or Myanmar, what it's called now today, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, then you have little island or little country of Bhutan on the island of Borneo there uh, that looks like it's right next to Malaysia. Then you have the Philippines. Uh, so you have a number of countries that occupy this mainland and island area. A lot of diversity, population about 602 million people, with Indonesia being the most populous. You're going to find a variety of, a large variety of languages and ethnic groups. And it's rather rural, believe it or not, not highly urbanized. It suffers also or benefits from the tropical monsoon, the wet monsoon as we call it, uh, which is a warm year-round situation providing seasonal rainfall. And it also produces typhoons, which is kind of opposite of the hurricanes that we get in this part of the world. As you can tell, uh, the climate has obviously facilitated the development of a lot of different crops and materials. As you can see, the wind patterns uh, in the oceans have facilita uh, facilitated trade and connections to the other world regions. This area of the world used to be called the Spice Islands. Obviously, rice is a major crop. More than 120 centimeters of rainfall yearly fall in this area, creating the rice. They terrace the rice. They create water uh, paddies to grow it, highly irrigated, a lot of labor needed to do it. As you'll notice, because of the location of the plate tectonic situation in the area, all the plates converging in this area, the Eurasian plate, the Philippine plate, the Pacific plate, the Australian plate, this creates a very active region for volcanoes, mountains, earthquakes, And as a result of the volcanoes, earthquakes, and mountain uh, building, it produces a lot of uh, instability. Uh, you'll notice that you have two types of uh, landforms. The mainland area, obviously older, mountainous, deltas with narrow coastal plains. And then on the other hand, you have the large variety of, of islands that are very fragmented, and this is, the, uh, this is the area where you have a lot of transportation and communication. In terms of ecological regions, you see a lot of biodiversity in this area uh, because of the land bridge that was created uh, in this area. Uh, Australia is somewhat related and tied to this area even though we separate Australia out into a different realm. It's heav heavily forested, <clears throat> a large degree of rubber production in the area and mangrove forests, uh, a lot of diversity. One of the areas of concern obviously is the deforestation, the clearing of trees for agriculture. Uh, and there is a claim there that uh, we need to feed the people, and as a result, they are cutting down trees and uh, clearing some areas, producing some, ec some ecological issues. It's endangering animals. Uh, it also promotes flooding and soil erosion. So all these are concerns that you will find in this realm. This realm also was colonized by the Europeans, as you can tell on this map. Portugal, Spain, and the Dutch were obviously uh, very connected. The French, the British, and of course the United States were all involved, and your book does a nice job describing that. This area was highly involved in World War II, obviously with the Japanese invasion of the United States. Then we have all the activity after the war, in the Philippines, Burma, Malaysia. Uh, Indonesia went through independence in 1949, so there has been a lot of post-colonial activity in Southeast Asia. Economic development is extremely important. This is a highly developed part of the world with a growing manufacturing and technology area moving away toward imports 
uh, and as a result of the Green Revolution, um, it is a very prosperous area of the world. Unfortunately, with their economic prosperity, they are also very much tangled up in global economic crisis. So in 2008, they had a downturn in their economies, just like we all did. Ten of the top 11 economies had negative change in their GNP. They had increased inflation, and as a result, uh, they are coming out of, of, of a situation in 2008 like the United States and China. They, too, are worried about how the climate is changing uh, and how, what effect that's going to have on their agriculture. This area obviously was involved in politics, the uh, Vietnam War, or what we call the Indochina Wars in Vietnam and Cambodia. The United States actively participated in that. Uh, the Chinese were involved, so it's a, it was a political hotbed for years, and of course, this is the one war that the United States lost when they exited Vietnam in 1975, but uh, the United States and Vietnam are now talking again. We've established normal relations, uh, and it's now beginning to move away from its communist background. Religious diversity in language is uh, uh, very important here. Obviously, in the mainland area, you have a high degree of Buddhism. Uh, in the islands of Indonesia, you have a high degree of Islam. Actually, Indonesia is the largest Islamic country in the world, believe it or not. You have elements of Hinduism uh, on the islands of Bali. Christianity is very, very strong in the Philippines. They're estimating about 85%, and that's due to the Spanish influence. Over 500 eth ethnic and language groups in this area, and you can see all the diversity, Thailand, Burma, <coughs> Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, uh, Malaysia. And there are some minority populations, and they are to some degree in conflict. The Chinese in particular are trying to influence this part of the world, and it's causing some, uh, some uh, feedback from the South Asians. Another problem with this realm has to do with the drug trade, something very similar that we saw in Afghanistan. And you can see the heroin production, methamphetamine production. Uh, Thailand is trying to control it um, with, with 11 million heroin addicts worldwide. It's a real problem. Drug cartels are heavily involved. So this is a, this is a big problem in this part of the world. As you can see in terms of population, 600 million not as large as you would expect in comparison to East Asia and South Asia. One of the big uh, areas of interest is the movement of Chinese into this area, over 20 million during the colonial period and, and, in the, and then after the 1900s the Chinese have been immigrating in and that's causing some ethnic conflict. That's it.